so recently I've been asked quite a bit about gradients and how to do certain gradient work from different people and I thought this would be a good opportunity to throw something up that might cover some of that. Um, first let me apologize uh, if you can't or having trouble understanding how I'm uh, what I'm saying. Um, watch the first minute or two of the first video to explain it. It's medical stuff so um, anyway this is my new website. <coughs> It's uh, not great or anything, but it's better than the old site and something I played with and got a bunch of uh, help from people in the forum, so thank you all for that, and it's okay. It's nothing great, but um, it, it is different than the old site, so it's something you'll notice when you go there. Um, let's get into the gradient stuff. So, just some real simple things. We'll be uh, using, like, black to white black to transparent just to show you how the gradient tool works and then we'll uh, get into some more advanced features with you know different lines fading in and out and stuff like that but for now it's just so w what you want to do is you'll, you'll pick the gradient tool um, the top color here being your foreground the second one being your background we'll just go black to white we'll go down here and normally it is I think chosen to that by default and so what happens is when you hold your mouse button down and then drag your re your mouse when it's held down and then let go depending on where you all do that it'll give you your gradient now I'm just holding control Z or hitting control Z to back out of what I did it's just a shortcut for undo so you, if you did it up here and you came down just about that far all your black and white is going to be within that range. The change. Um, black will be on the top left. Everything white will be to the bottom right of that button. So we'll let go. See? So everything between those two points is where you're going to see the gradient change. Also, if you hold down control while dragging this, it will try to keep it in a straight line for you. So if we did it from here to about there, see. So now I'll show you something a little bit different. Again, I'm just hitting Control Z, which backs out what I did before. If you select the same box, scroll down to where it says Foreground to Transparency. So it'll be whatever the top color is here to invisible behind it. So again, here to here. See how it says trying to it behind it? You can do it from here to here. Here to here. Doesn't matter. And that's probably more useful than uh, foreground to background color. Um, then, below that, let's go back to foreground to background color. Below that is the shape option. So you click in there. If you click something like uh, radial, Go to the center somewhere, pull it out, let go, see, black to white. You can alternate that, control Z to back out, hit this little uh, button here which reverses everything. So now it should be white to black, and it is. Alright, and then there's other options in here for that. You could use something like that just up in this corner if you needed it see you could also go foreground to transparent so we'll back out of that up in the corner same thing but everything behind it will be black the only thing that'll or be invisible the only thing that'll be in color is what you see near the uh, target points here see what I mean so that there is is mostly pretty just the the very simple 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 basics behind gradients the next thing I'll show you is some different things you can do with that sort of thing. Um, so, for example, if you took the Eclipse tool, and we'll just leave a shape like that, and we want just the gradient to be inside that shape. So you grab your gradient, same thing, just go into shape somewhere, 
See how it's just in that shape alone? Everything behind it? Hold Control Shift A to deselect everything, and you can see how it gives you that effect. Alright? Um, same thing for foreground to background color. Oh, we're still in radial, by the way. So let's go to linear. Oop. See? So, I'll show you something else real quick. Oops, let's go back to that selection. Nah, it might not. So we'll make that selection again. Now let's say we want the top part of this oval cut off with a round circle. So we'll grab, the, grab those, hold control, which means anything you do to the selection is going to take it off of that selection. It's minus. You hold shift, it'll add it to that selection. So we'll hold control, we'll grab some zeros here. So now you see how that's not part of the selection no more. Then we'll do the same thing down here. And you want to hold control before you do it, or it'll take over for what you've done so far. Now we want to do a gradient. So grab the gradient. We'll go foreground to transparent. We'll make foreground color red just to change it up a little bit. So we'll go in here. Hold it over. Control Shift A to get rid of your dance and dance just so you can see it better. And so that's how that gradient works. Now it would be the same thing if you had um, lines, for example, or, 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 or you wanted to do a, a shape that was gradient. So let's make a just a real quick, simple. Um, I don't think we'll need to do too much. Let's do something like this, and then we'll move this over like this. Uh, that should be good. We'll take these down here. Uh, uh, right now, I'm just creating a uh, quick little uh, set of lines, sort of. You'll see. Or some spurs that you might see on a car. Maybe. Maybe never see on a car. But you'll get the idea in a minute. If I quit screwing everything up, it would help. Yeah. No, it's just me being dumb. So anyway, this doesn't have to be perfect. Let's do something like that. Alright. Hit enter. And let's say this is a design we have across the car. And we wanted to go from dark blue. Let's put white behind it. Hit new layer over here. We'll drag that new layer down. That's a brand new layer. Hold control right quick. Uh, fill. Oh, it's only going to fill the selection. And hold on, we'll do that in a minute. Let me uh, back out of that. Let's let's do the line first, and I'll show you what I was doing with that white layer. But so let's say we wanted to go from I don't know red to yellow. Let's do that. Oh, change the wrong color. Uh, this will be fine. We'll just switch this. Grab that. Grab that. Blah blah blah. Grab our. Now it's linear, foreground to transparent, but we want it to yellow, so foreground to background, and probably, let's say we wanted the fade just to be between here and here, just these two bins. So basically that's where you would start it. Then hold control, move over, and you can see where the fade is, and then the solid cutter basically starts at the other ends of those. Hold control, shift A to back out to get a really good look, but that's how you would add a gradient. Now, let's do the same thing with um, transparent background, and let's say we want that transparency to start about in here. So this is where we would start, and we want the transparency to end here, and then everything behind it is completely transparent. So that's how you do that. Transparency also lets you do a couple other things. Let me show you something real quick. Let's say we just had this big square and we're um, foreground to transparent. We just do a little bit, just about like that. Well, with transparency, we could add to that. Um, without transparency, when you go for, let me show you, when you go to foreground to background color, 
when you do this, right? And then you want to add something to it. So let's say you went up here, shrug down here. What's going to happen is what you did before is completely going to disappear, and what you just did now is going to take completely over. But if you switch to foreground to transparency, first thing we'll do is just we'll just make this all yellow because we want background yellow. But we want to add a little bit of red here and there. Foreground to transparency over this yellow. So let's do it once. We'll do it about there. But now, when we do other times, let's say we want from here up to here. See how it doesn't take completely over? It just adds to your whole thing. And so if you're, this is helpful if you're trying to do different things like, I mean, there's just probably a thousand options for it actually, but, but you can always add to it instead of it completely taking over. So again, foreground and transparency is going to be your favorite color. I think a lot of times, instead of going red to yellow with something like this, right? What you would see is somebody would make the background or, or you know people would make the background color yellow uh, let me get rid of this what I did up here uh, of course then we would do the same thing I'll make this a little bit quicker I'll just do a, a rough line so you guys, just to get the point across. But now what you would see instead of foreground to background, you would more than likely see foreground to transparent, just because it gives you more options this way. Um, and easily you can get rid of everything behind that if you had more than you wanted, you just click on that layer, control I to inverse your current selection so everything around it is now selected and then just hit delete but now you have two separate layers see which makes things even more useful <clears throat> so you know these are just a few ways to work with gradients this thing goes on and on and on and on and you're going to learn different things and find what works best for you what doesn't work good and I'm sure there's saying better ways to do certain things than I've done them um, here, but this is really just kind of off the top of my head, spur of the moment, things I'm thinking about right now, maybe answering a couple questions I was asked about. Um, uh, but, you know, your layers are important, where you have them um, matters too, but that's your gradient, your blend tool. Those are your options, you can change everything down to, you know, with two separate layers, you can make that yellow half transparent. So, um, you could also do it with the red, which will make the yellow come through more. So, having separate layers is probably the better way to go. It's a little bit more work, but not much. Once you get the hang of it, it goes pretty fast. You can get moving pretty good. So, you know, I hope this uh, gradient, uh, little small basic gradient tutorial helps you guys. Um, uh, I'll try to answer more questions in the forums if they come up, and I'll probably start pointing to this if the answer is in this. So, um, thank you all for watching, and uh, have fun painting. Later.